Hi, everyone. How are y'all doing? Uh, I'm Shai. I'm part of the developer relations team here at Contentful. And joining me today is Debbie. Debbie, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for I'm, having uh, me I'm, here. I'm so excited to have you joining me today. I, uh, I've been uh, poking around at Nuxt for the last few days, and I have a lot of questions. And I'm really hoping that you can teach me everything you know. But I figured to get started, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are? Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm Debbie O'Brien. I'm working full time at Nuxt. So uh, if you don't know what Nuxt is, you should. <laughs> so Nuxt is an intuitive view framework. And um, basically, I am the head of learning and developer advocate there at Nuxt. And yeah, my job is to Nuxtify the world, to make sure <laughs> that everyone knows what Nuxt is and knows how easy it is to use so that you can all just start using it. And that's basically it. <laughs> I, uh, I love that line. We need to get something similar for contentful, content contentify the world, or it doesn't, it doesn't work as well. You got... Yeah, it's got, yeah, <laughs> Nuxtify just works. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, you you already asked my first question, answered my first question. So uh, before we get to my second question, do you? I'm gonna go ahead and plug a couple links so folks who are watching this uh, and maybe are you know not visual learners and more reading learners can can go find some some stuff to check out and look at while watching the live stream. Um, so first off, I'm gonna plug some of the contentful stuff. Uh, from my side, we've got our developer portal. Uh, as always, you can go check that out at contentful.com slash developers or uh, contentful.dev if you're if you're feeling like uh, not typing as much. Uh, we have our Slack where we you know chat and answer questions and hang out, kind of our community area. If you want to come, uh, let us know what your questions are and need help. Uh, we have a GraphQL course that you can check out if you're looking to learn uh, Contentful and GraphQL together. Uh, and then if you build something using our GraphQL API, we, we're more than happy to hook you up with swag as well. Just show us what you built. Uh, and the thing I'm most excited about, uh, and is unfortunately the last week I get to plug this, is our first ever conference is going to be on Tuesday, or sorry, on Thursday. Uh, that's uh, fast forward. Uh, we're just two days out from that. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. And this is the last you'll hear about it. Uh, until the end of the live stream, uh, and then you'll you'll never hear about the first one ever again from me. So, <laughs> Debbie, you want to share what uh, what links you gave us? Sure. So I have a YouTube channel that I started just a couple of weeks ago. So the link is a bit strange because I haven't like been doing it long enough. But uh, yeah, there's a good few videos there if you want to learn Nuxt and if you want to learn and go deep dive into Nuxt, then check out that. Uh, the Nuxt documentation, um, it is very, very good. And I'm not saying that because I rewrote it. I'm saying that because it is. <laughs> and uh, Nuxt Discord. So if you want to, like, you know, if you have issues and problems or something, you can chat to anyone on our Discord channel. So do check that out. And yeah, next week it's View Toronto and it's absolutely free to attend. So I've actually got my sweater on View Toronto. Woohoo! Yeah, um, so I do attend it because Sebastian will be giving a talk on Nuxt 3. I'll be giving a talk on GraphQL. Um, so there's been, there's going to be a lot of like Nuxt talks in there and it's free to attend. So yeah, just check that out as well. That's awesome. It. And as always for folks watching, we are paying attention to the comments. So do let us know your questions and, and if there's anything we're, we're maybe going a little too fast or you need us to double back on, we're more than happy to dive into, into tangents and answer questions and, and, uh, do whatever you need to, to be successful, to, to learn contentful and Nuxt. So I guess we should, we should answer my second question. So we, we already answered what is Nuxt and, um, I'm, you know, I'm coming from the background of like a Python developer. And so my knowledge of the JavaScript ecosystem kind of starts with uh, front end JavaScript, and then it goes into node. And past that point, things start to get a little fuzzy for me, you know, I, I can I can work my way around uh, Gatsby and do all sorts of stuff. But I guess, uh, kind of where does Nuxt sit in the JavaScript? Uh, script ecosystem? Why would someone choose to use Nuxt over? Well, something some of the gals? Um, I guess you would use Nuxt if you're using Vue, right? So mm -hmm. if you're um, if you're a Vue developer or you you want to use Vue, um, I'm not saying you should use Nuxt and not Vue, right? Because Nuxt <laughs> is Vue, it is Vue, but it's giving you a little bit more. So you get server side rendering, uh, static site generation, yeah. you get automatic uh, routing, so you don't have to mm -hmm. maintain a router.js file, uh, code splitting out of the box, and there's a lot of extras, right? It's yeah. Very performant, progressive web app, etc. But it is Vue, and you still need to learn Vue. And yeah. that's why we keep the view docs separate to the Nux docs because the view stuff is view specific. Um, it would be very comparable to to other frameworks, but you're using different languages. Yeah. So should you switch from one framework to the other? That depends on on what framework, what language you want to use, right? So yeah. I mean, there are quite a few out there. They're all good, in my opinion. So just choose the one that works best for you. But for me, yeah. it's 
<laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and I was I was poking through the Create Nuxt app, and I was seeing that you have you already have built-in support for TypeScript. If you know maybe you're a TypeScript person coming over, or if you're just a you know vanilla JavaScript person like me, which was which was pretty cool as well to see kind of that different level of support. Um, should we dive into things? Should we create create a Nuxt yeah. app? Cool. Nice. So. Um, so I guess uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, it's yarn create. Oh, I, I even have it in my my history. <laughs> so this is great. Um, so for folks folks watching, full disclosure, my MacBook died in the last week, so I'm using Windows to to code for the first time. And so if anyone has any VS Code hints, uh, let me know. I'm using the the Ubuntu double WSL, so I should be okay, but uh, but hopefully this is clean. So I'm going to start by just doing a create, and I know it's going to ask me a couple questions, and maybe you can walk me through it. Huh. Yeah, so it pretty much asks you if your project name, that's going to be in your package, Jason. So yeah. your project name is streaming app. You can change that later if you want to. That's fine. Um, we're going to go with JavaScript here because my TypeScript cool. knowledge is not. That's good. My TypeScript <laughs> knowledge is bad as well. You want you want uh, Stefan for TypeScript or, yeah. or David for TypeScript. I'm the one wrong day, Dev person day. for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, project manager, I prefer Yarn. It's yeah, um, me too. faster and better. Um, I am a big fan of Tailwind here. Um, you can use whatever framework you want for CSS, but um, I, I, I like love that you have so many like already built it, and this is going to pre-hook it all up for me and take care of the imports and the dependencies. Exactly. Yes. That's it's amazing. Do it all for you. <laughs> That's great. Um, so yeah, Tailwind CSS for me, and then here you got the Nux modules. So mm -hmm. it's giving you three modules you can add in here. So Axios, if you're going to make HTTP. HTTP request. So mm -hmm. just like um, pressing the space bar, you can select that one and it will automatically add it for you. Progressive web app, if you want your application then to be more performant and be as a progressive web app. And the next one you don't want because we want to work with Contentful and not Nux content, right? Okay, <laughs> probably not there. The content is Git-based um, CMS. So then you yeah. basically have all your content in, in Git and you can not then access it out yeah. externally. So right, that's so. great if you've got an editorial team that that uh, knows knows Git and probably is exclusively developers or, or very technical editorial folks. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's very developer focused. It's great for yeah. documentation for developers. That's what it's uh, it's built for. So, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, so probably then, both of these. Yeah, I mean, you can choose what you want. I mean, you know, we're not really going to be doing much um, of lint staging or you know style mm -hmm. lint. You can add if you want. Comment lint. We're not going to be, you know, doing much of this, but you could add them all in because it's, um, yeah, it's your code better. You can just leave it out up to you. I'll, I'll leave those two. We're not going to do testing. Definitely today. not. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I do a live stream, it's testing. It's like we're not going to go there. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, if you, I feel like if you do a test-driven development live stream, you're you're going to only get about half as far because you have to write the tests and yeah. and write the code. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, so this is like um, server-side rendering, static side generation. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So you can click on that. Yeah. Oop. And then this depends on where you're going to like, um, yeah. where your target is. Is it like a server or is it static? So, you know, where are you going to put it yeah. live in the cloud? See, the, I, I really like that you get both of these out of the box. I feel like so frequently when I'm messing around with JavaScript frameworks, you know, I'm either, I'm picking exclusively a static site generator or exclusively like a server side client side thing and it's really mm -hmm. nice that like you know if i if i dive into nux i get both of those i can kind of pick and choose which version rather than having to go learn an alternative framework to do to do the opposite thing so i think that's really cool that I both of them are you here you can you change could... from one to the other once you've built your application if you decide to then that you know you're you're now going to have to host mm -hmm. it on a server because the client requests it on a server. Then you mm -hmm. can just change it very one command, you change it, and that's it. Oh, that's amazing. So, so one of the use cases that we end up seeing fairly regularly is, you know, you have you have the production website that's living on you know your your edge server like Netlify or something, and that's your static mm -hmm. site site, which is great for when consumers are going to it. But then your your preview folks, your editorial teams get really annoyed because they have to wait forever for builds to happen to be able to see, you know, yeah. here I'm I'm pushing up my draft content, and so you you could just throw it up the node version hitting like a preview API, and it'll just work, and and hopefully those folks would, wouldn't complain about waiting on build times then. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So I figure we should go for a server so we don't have to wait for builds today. Um, I don't know. 
don't know. I mean, we could also do static and I mean, are we going to build it? I mean, it just depends on where you're going to, yeah. where you're going to host it really. So that's yeah. completely up to you and we yeah. can change it later. So that's also fine. Cool. We'll see let's, how much time we have. Yeah. Let's sit, let's stick with server then just so we don't have to, don't have to, maybe we can just show how quickly it is to switch during the stream too. That might be cool just to That might to be see. cool because if we have time, I could show you the preview. Ooh. And that's with the static and that's without building. We can actually preview it live. I like that. Cool. Okay. I'm guessing go with the thing recommended for VS Code. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just a config. So you yeah. can just for it, semantic pull requests. This is if you're working more with a team yeah. and stuff. Um, I no. mean, if you're going to set up GitHub Actions, it's going to set it all up for you, which is great. We're not really yeah. going to do that today because we're not yeah. playing it, or maybe we are. We we have two GitHub Actions uh, things coming up in about a month. So, so I'm going to hold off for that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's definitely a full hour as well, GitHub Actions. Yeah. Um, stick on git cool yep and that's it and then that will just um you know do its little thing download everything and yeah. set up everything for you um cool. so you're probably cheating here because you can see like in the in, in yeah. the in the window um you can see all the the folders there yeah. <laughs> or you can there see like you already created one from earlier <laughs> <laughs> yep uh and then we could do yarn dev and see what happens the build. Oh man, this is it's so nice to have a fast machine when doing these doing these streams. It's uh, <laughs> we've been we've uh, had a couple streams where we've had to wait for like four or five minutes and it's it's been a little rough. And so it's nice that uh it's done already. And there we go. We've got a we've got a website. Exactly. So up and running, easy done. Yeah. Um we can go home now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured like call it a day. It's been a it's been a great 15 minutes. I'm shy from the no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um Sorry. so can I should I I can show you some of the the content I've been working on if if that would be useful and, and then maybe we can tie those two things together. Yeah, cool. What have you got? Cool. So I've been I've been doing a lot of running recently, or I was doing a lot of running, uh, and so I, I figured I could build a little content model where we could talk about some of the runs I've been doing. So in Contentful, I've I've created two content types. Uh, so we've got runs and we've got runner. Um, so runs is um, you know what the name of the run is, when I did the run, a picture of my heart rate exported from the Fitbit app. Although we could just replace this with like a picture or something. A distance and then a reference to a runner, which could be comparable to like an author. And then yeah. for the runner, we've got um, just the name of the runner um, and uh, and the photo of the runner. So if we click into cool. it, you know, we can see, uh, you know, I ran to Greenpoint. Here's my heart rate. Here's the runs. And then, you know, this is me as the runner. And I figured maybe this could be a good piece of content to like mess around with uh, yeah. and kind of get up on the on the website. Uh, when I was practicing this earlier, yeah, I can make Contentful bigger, absolutely. Um, uh, when I was when I was doing my dry run beforehand, <laughs> I was joking with Debbie about this off camera, but I'd uh, I'd been putting the routes rather than the heart rate, and uh, I had inadvertently revealed where I live, so I've gone ahead and shifted it to, to heart rate. So uh, hopefully, no one can figure out where my apartment is. <laughs> Sorry for the less interesting thing to look at, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It looks good. It looks good. Cool. Okay, this looks great. So this is all in Contentful, and you can yep. modify and change this, etc. Yep. Yep. We could add you if you're if you're curious. We can throw up one of your runs or something, or. Um, if that's something you want you want to do, we can add you as a as an author as well. Or sorry, as a runner, as a, not not an author. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm doing too many blogs yeah. these days. But yeah, we can we can add. You know, a run really quickly, That's and really cool. uh, I don't know, Debbie. Where, what, uh, what city are you in? I'm in Palma of Mallorca. Run Palma or... of Mallorca. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that. Palma. Yeah. And like that. Space, yeah. Space D E. D E. And then space, and then Mallorca. M A W -L, L O R C A. <laughs> like that. Yeah, Palma of Mallorca. So yeah. Oh, of not the. Yeah, but it's de, it's it's in Spanish. It's there, so that's the actual yeah. name. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna just grab something. For, oh, this is gorgeous. Can I move in with you? Yeah, this, <laughs> this is, is actually so where nice. I run. This is actually where I run. I run in front of that cathedral. Um, take that. Take any of that picture there with the cathedral, because that's exactly where I run. Oh, this cathedral, and there's a beach and everything. 
Yeah, well, that's that's just like in front of the um of the cathedral, and then the beach is in front of that, and I run alongside the cathedral, alongside um. Oh yeah. gosh, I'm so it's jealous. I'm so I'm very sorry. very jealous. Um. So I'm just gonna say you went for a run yesterday. Yeah, I so didn't, but I will today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll make it today then. <laughs> uh, we can add the photo. Uh, steal that. I like to end up using these titles as my uh, alt text. Uh, you got to commit. How much running are you going to do today? Um, well, I have absolutely no idea what a mile is. So you're going to have <laughs> to get fair. a translator for that. Um, so <laughs> kilometer is maybe about, I'd say maybe about nine or 10 today. Okay. I'm going to call that a six, six, no, 10 mile or 10. I'm getting my direction mixed up. It's uh, three miles is a 5K, right? So if you're doing 10, 10 kilometers, that would be a six, six mile run. If the clock, yeah, let's just whatever. close enough. And then, yeah, we can make a new runner. Um, I'm just going to steal it from your website. I thought you were going to say you've forgotten how to spell my name. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not that bad. Um, uh, I have the memory of a goldfish, but it's it's not that terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so this is quite fast, adding content here and contentful. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, just hitting publish. And then, you know, going forward, if we add some more of your runs, your, your you know, runner profile is already there. And um, cool. I'm just using GraphQL to kind of poke around. I have a little query written already. Um, and so we could actually filter just by um, by runner. By runner, we could and you know, we get all the the info as well. You know, we could filter by date, we could filter by we could, you know, filter on, on a whole bunch of these parameters. But this is kind of the easiest way I feel like to to just get the data out really quickly. And it's it's all auto completing and self documenting as well. And so the the queries are really nice. Um, as well. Um, one thing I'm going to actually just do is, since this is a big photo, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick transform on it. So we're using consistent sizes across all of them. That might be a problem in a little bit. So let's run it. And yeah, and there we go. We got it pre cropped and everything, which is nice. So cool. cool. So um, I guess we should head back to Nuxt. And since I've kind of, I feel like I'm kind of forcing you to use GraphQL here. <laughs> do you have any? Do you have any? Uh, I should we go ahead and install the GraphQL module to get started? Sure. Sure. Cool. So um, yeah, I'm a big fan of GraphQL actually. So yeah. So I, when I was poking around, I saw that there were a few different, or, or actually maybe you could talk a little bit about kind of how Nuxt modules work and and kind of what those are and and. Um, and uh, maybe just kind of give a, a little information to, to folks about about that. Yeah, so modules are kind of like um, kind of like wrappers of of you know to make things easier, right? So if you've got a way of doing something, instead of having to repeat it in every single application, mm -hmm. um, we create a module and then you just install it and then you have all that configuration done, right? Mm -hmm. So um, otherwise, you'd have to manually add all these files and add everything mm -hmm. in, and that's like you know repeating. So a lot of people have mm -hmm. created modules. The community have created amazing modules. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a website, modules.nuxjs.org, that you can go to, and you can see like so many modules, 145 the last time I looked. Um, so yeah, you can like search for, you know, uh, like, you know, if you wanted to work with dev tools, with fonts, with images, with payment, with performance, and they're all in there. So it just makes it easy to kind of look at, you know, what, what have we got? What do we want to work with? Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> amazing. I, we just got a comment about the conversion of miles to <laughs> kilometers, which is very helpful. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I guess we're going to look for GraphQL, probably get rid of the fonts. Uh, see that you've got Apollo here. Um, yeah. Apollo might be a little overkill. The one I was poking around at earlier was this one. And I see that's not listed in the store. Maybe we should switch to Apollo or uh, um, maybe well. this general. We can try it and and it works. So the ones that are, are listed here are ones that we've verified and we know they work mm -hmm. and stuff. So they should be okay. And the ones that are not listed here, maybe just haven't been added because we ha we don't we haven't even found them, right? So yeah. It doesn't mean 
mean they're bad. It just means that, you know, this we only released uh, recently. Oh, and wow. these are particularly maintained by people we know or the next core team or we've mm. had like, you know, uh, work with them. Um, but if your module isn't there, then, yeah. you know, just do a PR and we'll check it out and make sure that it, you know, it can be added once it kind of like, you know, meets the criteria that it's not going to you know break everyone's application and stuff. So this one I've never used. I actually normally write a plugin and and um, and do my own um, instead of using Apollo because Apollo is quite big as well. Yeah. So, yeah. But let's not go into making plugins in this <laughs> one because I think we might go out of scope and, and not. Um, Just yeah. a little bit, a little out of scope. There. Yeah, let's do the easy way because what we want to do is we want to show um, yeah. that we're connecting with GraphQL. We're getting the data from content fill in Nuxt. So exactly yeah, cool I, I, I guess uh let's go ahead and get started with this one then Oop, am i in the directory yes um, it doesn't work we'll just create a plugin and you know yeah. always do the do the old school just http get method if we need to <laughs> as well so <laughs> okay and then there were some instructions about configuration i'm guessing okay uh and that was in the nuxt config so, yeah, so while you're doing this, I'll just talk through because you didn't even mention anything to anyone. So if you've never used Nook before, you're going to get all this folder structure. Yeah. Um, so you'll see like for on, on the folder structure there, you'll see the top folders dot Nooks. That's your development. That's like building the application while you're developing. The assets folders for your CSS images, et cetera, your mm -hmm. components, your components. Layouts are layouts. It's very straightforward, right? Middleware is middleware. Mm -hmm. um, but what's really important here is the pages folder because that's where you just create a page in there and you're going to mm -hmm. have automatic routing. So you don't need to do anything. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Did you not know that you see? Cause you didn't even play around with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just went straight in for the graph coil. <laughs> yeah. So if you were to create a new page for your running, um, called, I don't know, run, mm -hmm. then you just put it in there and actually just do it. Yeah. Go on, put in, put in the page. Uh, new um, page. Yeah. Just create a new page. Uh, make sure you. And up you. You Got put it? a template and uh yeah, so that's just the the template yeah. is just kind of the HTML container, and then exactly. I'm guessing that links up to that uh template from above that you were mentioning, I think. Um so template is like basically where you're gonna write your your HTML and kind of hate HTML, and then script is your JavaScript and yeah. um and style is your CSS, and they're all in mm. one file, right? So yeah. I'll I'll show you quickly how how that works in a second. But basically, you can just put in runs in here, and any HTML goes in here. So then you can save that, and then just go to your application. Yeah. And then just put like slash run. Oh, you haven't even got it up and running. You did have it. Up yeah, and I, I, the, I turned it off to get the uh, to get the GraphQL thing installed. So let me just turn it back on. OK, fair enough. I'll forgive you. <laughs> so <laughs> out of curiosity, can this do so one of the one of the neat things that we do with contentful is is usually kind of a, a common pattern is we'll add like a slug field. Um, and then is it able to kind of dynamically make those routes, you know, based on like a like a slug field or something? So yeah, so basically, yeah, if you're going to use slug, then you use for a dynamic page um, in Nux, you use the underscore. Mm -hmm. So you would call it underscore slug. Oh, uh, the the it would be so it'd be runs dot view or it'd be underscore run or underscore slugs dot view. Underscore slugs dot view slug okay. single. Single. Let me go ahead and just make a. Let me just make a new one. Save it first. <laughs> yeah. Like so that. anytime you put the underscore in, I I would put slug instead of slugs. Because it's like going to get every slug right singular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, once you put the underscore in, then you're getting a dynamic page. Yeah. Let me go ahead and just update these runs because it'll be missing the field. Mm, look at that. Is that going to slugify it? Uh, it should. Oh, I'm clicking too many things. I'm clicking too fast. You're getting too excited, and yeah. you know you haven't even shown them how the. The roots work, and now you're into dynamic roots. Like you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Actually, that's totally fair. Let me not let me not uh, skip ahead of myself. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, it's 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 very simple, but just um, 
we don't even have any content up on the we're not loading the content from anywhere yet so. exactly i mean you know what are you we'll doing? come back yeah you're right we'll we'll come back to it so okay we've got we've got runs so right, oh so and we've got errors that's no good yeah, because you know uh, they're just um um mm. just saving errors prettier and and stuff like that yeah um can i ignore these prettier errors for now or is there an easy uh, way just put it in a prettier ignore for now if you want to um okay. it's about uh, spacing it's about um yeah. you're using like a tab thing i normally have like yeah. a oh it's like a you're using four spaces on on, on vs yeah it's two i'm guessing two spaces rather than yeah it's yeah. two and then it needs a new line yes uh, and then this is probably going to complain as well. Uh, two, I'll just give it a H1. That's why it's sometimes, you know, not good to add prettier when you're doing demos, but it's also good because your code looks nicer, but um, everyone has different things when they set it up. Um, so okay. there we go. Compile successfully. That's what I like to hear. And then let's get that link. It was the 3001 or? 3000, yeah, you were open on. 3000. Oh, I didn't have it up. You already have it open, so you just, it's, it's. Nope. You have Sorry. 2001, and you changed it to, what, what, what? Oh, you already had an application up and running. It did, is, let me try 3000 and see if, there we go. Cool. So if I go to runs now, we should get that. It was run, run right singular. <laughs> yep. So I see the word okay. runs. <laughs> so progress. So anyone, anyone with binoculars looking at the screen can mm -hmm. see that in the top corner um, <laughs> that that is there. So that's a, that's um, how easy it is to actually just get your you know your routing yeah. set up with Nux. You literally just create a page and that's it, right? So um, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Right. So we've got a run page and we have mm. a slug page now as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's let's try and connect um, get some data and then figure out the dynamic page when we've got. You know, the slugs have been running, I think, no? Let's do it. That sounds like a lot of fun. So um, we should probably, this is Apollo, so we don't want that one. Um, so uh, I'm guessing we need to take this configuration and uh, include it. Yeah, you want. And hook up to the actual. Just just copy the module uh, modules, because you might already have another module. In yeah, there should be, it. I think I saw one earlier for. We installed uh, access. Yes, correct. Um, yeah, Axios is here and it's right there. So it's going to be, uh, add that into the array with it. They can be friends together. Uh, and oh, it's complaining because I didn't configure it. That makes total sense. Um, exactly. this is very fast, right? Nux is kind of going, you forgot this. Come on. So did I, you know, <laughs> See, I haven't even done anything yet. Nux, what are you complaining? <laughs> You're too fast for me. I know. <laughs> Um, okay, and so I can do uh, my stuff here. So my endpoint is going to be. Um, do you mind if I install uh, .env as well, just so I can toss everything um, in a, or I can just do it. Can, I can just can, do it you, here. You can use the runtime config. It's um, it's better. You can use it there, but .env is best not to. So yeah. you, you can use runtime config, uh, or is, pro public runtime config, or private runtime config. Um, if you're going to use it as an end variable. Yeah, I just need to toss. I mean, I can also just toss it in here as well for now. Let yeah, me go ahead and just do, for this. Now, but, um, do that. Um, I'm like allowed you, can, you can create just a dot .env um, uh, file if you want, yeah. put it there, and then use the runtime config to then reference that. Is, but, let's go ahead and do that then, just because it sounds like that would be the recommended use case, I'm guessing. Yeah, because you'd have this um, this in your, you know, somewhere in your build and, you know, wherever you're um, hosting it. Yeah. So space uh, ID. So these are your secrets that. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice thing. Nice thing with Contentful is that the since the we're only is consuming content in a read-only way, I'm not super worried about sharing these keys. We do have some keys that uh, mutate our API, but since since those are separate, those are the only ones I don't like showing on stream. But these ones are completely fine, and I don't end up invalidating them. So it's it's cool to poke around in here, I guess. Um, and then we need the authorization, which. 
I think that was in options if I was reading those documentation correctly. Headers, options. Uh, I'm just actually going to copy paste this from somewhere else. And then, how would we? How would I switch the the runtime? Or is there a? So um, we use the public runtime. So you can go in if you want to open the documentation. You can see it just yeah, there. It's not. It's just literally public runtime config. Um, just go to the. Yeah, you can probably search it. There you go. Um, so it's literally like um, just click on the runtime config guide if you uh, want to find information oh, about here how to do it. This is just the API reference. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you basically put it in like this, just um, just like that, and then you know put in. So you don't want to copy export default. You just want to copy public or private. Is it private or is it public? These um, are public. These so can then be public. public one. And just uh, that's in that next config file, this file. Yeah, so just go anywhere in there. Anywhere in here. Home. Yeah, so it's it's going to pick it up through this public runtime config. Mm -hmm. So um, you can then just put in that you're whatever it is in in code. this array uh, or. Yeah, so content full API whatever equals process dot env dot whatever. Um, uh, would, would I need to put the configuration? in here or is that enough to pick it pick it up uh, you can then yeah because you're using this in the author as i said i've never used it in here in this one but you could normally see you're referencing it here yeah and i'll need it also here yeah i mean this is this is more if you want to use it then in your in your application that you would use the runtime yeah. and use it um you can just hard code this now so we're not spending a ton of ton of time on it um and maybe we can Fix, I'll fix it later before I push this up on GitHub. Um, this isn't, I don't think this is super critical. No. So basically, if you wanted to then access that, so if you were making the call on the actual page and mm -hmm. we can reference that env variable, mm -hmm. we can do it through dollar $config in the runtime yeah. uh, config. So that's just basically how you do it. get it from the Nuxt config to your actual page, yeah. right, to your actual data yeah. call. Yeah. Um, one one question that just came in from from the audience is that is Nuxt automatically picking up that .n file? Well, that .n file is yeah, it's being used here, but it's not really going to be there because you're mm -hmm. not going to put it into Git, right? So it's going to take that from if you're I don't know where you normally host. So yeah, Netlify or something. Exactly. If it's in Netlify, it's going to find it in that Netlif in Netlify, right? Your process env, mm -hmm. etc. So in development, this is fine. Having it in here, just put it in your Git. Uh, ignore so it doesn't see it. Um, and then in your Nux config, use the runtime configs then to be able to access it in your async data, et cetera. Cool. Because um, I've never used this uh, module before. <laughs> um, it's like, you know, I don't know if this is going to work and stuff. So yeah, it's kind of like, sometimes you've got to, um, yeah. um, you've got to check, check it out, check these things out. But right, yeah. we've put in our authorization bearer. OK, uh, our endpoint is in. What else do we need? What does this module ask us for? Yeah, so it's uh, it looks like it was just we just needed to make a. I think that's everything that we needed to configure, and now it's just uh, actually making the making the GraphQL request. And um, I have one that I did earlier that I can just copy paste in if we want to cheat a little bit, and uh, I can just walk through it if that if that works. You cheated. I, I practiced. I, I wanted to make sure that I, I wasn't like completely, completely uh, oblivious. Uh, so I, okay. so I did do a little bit of research beforehand. Um, so let me go ahead and toss this in. Um, so uh, like you mentioned earlier, I'm just using that script function that you mentioned. I'm just importing GraphQL, and then I'm doing a, a an async query to just hit the contentful GraphQL API and then output it uh, as well. And I've got a console log in here, so we can actually check that this worked really quickly. Um, yeah, prettier errors. Am I? Oh, prettier. You can, yeah. you can fix it with the, with the dash dash fix. Oh, it, um, like in here? Dash dash fix like like this? Uh, run lint. Let run lint. That's even better. Or yarn, yarn lint, not run, because NPM is run. But anyway, it still works. Lint dash, um, dash, dash fix. Lint dash dash fix, and that should fix it. If it doesn't, then just. Um, yeah, that's fine. Now we've just got a console log, which is um, a warning. It's a warning because you know you shouldn't. 
put console logs in production. <laughs> <laughs> that that I agree with. I will I will give prettier that. That's uh, that's totally fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I am definitely guilty of doing that uh, and forgetting about it. So. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's more ES Lint than prettier. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and we've got some data in our terminal. So that's a, that's a good cool. sign. So, so you went over that really fast, in my opinion. You just went, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I did this earlier. So everyone just, <laughs> that's you know, that's just, very that, fair. That, that, that was really horrible of you. <laughs> I'm, you're totally right. Let, let me let me dive into that a little bit. So the the library itself was, was importing GraphQL. Um, I kind of actually just followed. I, I stole this earlier. Um, so the library itself is uh, importing GraphQL. I'm not sure what the export default is. Maybe you can explain that a little more concisely so, than, than I well, can. This is what we need. Like any JavaScript file, you've got to default mm. what you're going to use. So you've mm. got to export it, right? So yeah. that's always every time you're using the script tag that you want to like, you know, export something like data mm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you put it in here. Yeah. So it's kind of like prepping for the return, I guess, or like, like, um, is that I don't know if that's a good way to phrase it, but it's like like hey, this is a thing. It's going to have data, like uh, kind of like just defining the function, I guess. To be able to get it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I have my GraphQL query, um, which uh, I so I pre-wrote on GraphQL. Before, before you just go there, just go to the line above. Um, yeah. So we're using async data mm -hmm. here, um, mm -hmm. which means it's going to get the data before the page renders. Yeah. It's going to go fetch that data, and you're getting from context the GraphQL, so you can use it in params. So that's yeah. how we want to use our slug. We want to get reference to that. We've got to pass it in here to be able to use it then below. Exactly. Okay, now you can yeah. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, and we modified the query earlier. So let me go ahead and actually just grab that updated query as well. Um, go ahead and switch that out to. Oh, Pretty is going to complain at me again too. Uh, so let me re rerun the lint as well while I'm here. Um, uh, but yeah, we were doing that query. We're grabbing the runs collection, which is the the all of the content types of run, and then looping over it with this items collection, grabbing the name, the date, uh, diving into the object, the heart rate being an image, and then the the runner being a reference. So then we you know get the the title of the the heart rate picture, which we can use for for maybe an alt text on an image later, the URL of that picture. And then similarly with the runner, we dive into the runner object uh, and grab the name of the runner and then grab their photo. And uh, and we're able to uh, poop that data out, uh, put it in a, uh, you know, and then console log it and return it as well. So uh, let me go ahead and start the server and maybe we can start um, putting this on the page. OK, let's check it out. Cool. And. So you haven't actually put it in your template yet. So you know no. you have to see it on the page, right? You know, yeah. You're going to yeah, see it, it should... in the console. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't that how most people view the internet these days is by just opening up the developer that's console? Fine. And... <laughs> that will work. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, we got a question from Chris. Um, is there a trick to... Oops. Is there a trick to expanding objects in server-side console logs like async sync data? Um, I think... I think you can do that in the Firefox console. I don't know if you can do that in um, the uh, Oh no, I'm wrong. Uh, oh, this is because I'm I'm outputting it as a string rather than as a JSON object, I'm guessing. Um, I think if I if I outputted this as a, a JSON object rather than a string, it, it would work, but and do you, do you know anything about this, Debbie? How to I don't know get... exactly what it, what what um I don't really I don't really get the question to be honest. I think I think Chris is asking how like we have these Not objects. The how do we dive into them from the console log? Um. Well, like if we can click have... into them or. Yeah, I I don't know. You'd have to go into heart rate and then then. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I would do it. I would go dive into the object and then count console log the object. But I'm sure there's like a developer console trick that we're. Missing where you can do it. If you use the pre tag, you're still going to get objects. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. All right. So put it on the page. Um, so I guess we're getting into the the templating of view. Should I pull up the templating documentation or? Um. Well, what do you want to What do you want to see? I mean. Uh, just, just let, yeah. And maybe we could start by just doing a doing a loop and just getting the the names of the routes. 
Okay, so if you want to do a loop, then you use V4. V4. So, yeah, so what you got to make sure if you're going to put something else in here that you've got to wrap it in a div tag, you can't have mm -hmm. like, you know, two parents. You've got to have one parent inside that template. So just throw a, throw a div tag and then throw the H1 into that div tag. So Otherwise, it will cry. It will go crazy. In, in view three, you don't need to do this. But in view two, you still need to. And then now we can put whatever else we want in here, and yeah. that will all be good. So now we can put another, uh, I don't know, what are we doing? A div for each one, like a, like a box or something, like a... Yeah, that sounds great. We can do a box. So that's going to be a V4, and it's even auto-completed. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I so think... What, it... Run and runs, or what are we doing? Run, runner and runners, or what are run we... And ru run and run sounds great. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's going to be, uh, sorry, it's going to be data dot run collection dot items. So yeah, run in. Run in data dot la la la. <laughs> data dot run collection. Well, complete as well. Dot items. And then it's giving me an error yeah because I mean, you haven't put a key um so to make sure everything's unique it's best to have a um a key so you can do like just at the end of the v4 and you can put mm. the two dots and then put key uh like a colon yeah key and just put a colon so it's um uh, the two dots before key like it's, uh, what uh, do you call it is uh is making it's binding it right so it's making it like you know yeah bound to that so key is equal to like maybe you have Whatever, something unique in there. If not, you can yeah. always do index, but if you have something unique, then. And um, is that going to be in quotes as well? Yeah, so it could be run.title, run.id, or. Yeah, we can go with, oh, yeah, run dot yeah. route name. Yeah, and if you're ever stuck, you can always use the index. You just put in parentheses run, a comma, in yeah. i or index, and then you can use index. Um, it's not always great if you have more than v one v4 on the page, so mm. it's better to have always a unique one. Yeah, um, and then we should have our data inside this loop, and we can start. Uh, yeah, so just print out run. Just do a pre-tag with run and see if it actually works. Pre-tag. Yeah. Uh, and is it going to be double brackets or just the? Like... Uh, to those mustache, yeah. yeah. Mustache, right? I like that. I'm going to steal <laughs> that. That's a good. It's a much better <laughs> label than curly. Yeah, um, sometimes curly you're like hang on that's you know what's going cool yeah. so i hit save and nope and i got the lint warning because i am terrible um uh, so let me go ahead and fix that i love how fast this is and you can open it up and you can see it building while it's opening oh really uh, yeah refresh it there oh that's really cool so it gives you now see there look we've got our, our data um set out i don't know if that's expanded like um <laughs> it is it is expanded so there you go that's what i normally do because i never yeah. i don't always console log i normally just pre and i throw it on the page because yeah just, i don't like having to open and inspect the console yeah. so this is what i normally do this is this is much better than than my so i i'm normally a sublime and terminal person so i'm always alternating between three different programs and i think this way is much better <laughs> Then, yeah, this is this is my I can see everything and then I can yeah. actually just like you know say I need now run dot dot run dot whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so we can we can pull in that uh run dot name, I guess, and we make that a H2. Yeah, I normally always leave the pre-tag there so I can when I'm finished and then I go right, I've finished. And you it. delete it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and hopefully prettier isn't gonna get mad at us for for the pre-tag as well, <laughs> unlike the console log. If not, you can just ignore this whole file for today. One dot route name. Oh, what, what did I break? Oh, it's another. It's spacing in between. Um, spacing in between the brackets. Yeah. Just ignore it prettier for now because uh, I have it on save that it saves it automatically for me. Yeah. Um, I, I do it by setting up a um, in the just going to toss yeah. that. Just, just, just for now, just because we don't want to be fixing lint errors, and I'm not going to help you set up your. <laughs> your <lint laughs> that seems very reasonable. So we've got run, run one, and then the. Oh, this is cool. It even breaks it down by object as well. That's great. Yeah, because we're before it, aren't you? Yeah. You're like... mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
so we've got our runs and we can toss our run information as well. Uh, what am I? P tag, I guess. Runner dot me. Okay. No. You can see we didn't really do much to get GraphQL up and running to yeah. connect no. the content for like it's you know it's pretty cool. Oh, it's the spaces again. I am awful. I thought you ignored the file. <laughs> you just ignored uh, the line. Did you just ignore I, the line? I disabled the SLint. I think it's prettier that's complaining. It's prettier. It's prettier. Just do a, a prettier ignore. Is that the same thing? Just yes, Lint ignore or? Um, I think you have to actually do it in the actual file. If if not, um... uh, oh, like make a oh, disable pretty or pretty or ignore. Um, oh, like the like the um, like a... mm -hmm. yeah. That hopefully I spelled that right, and then just maybe just the. Something like this. Um, you can start star. Yeah, or, or just do or just do um dot asterisk dot view and then it'll just ignore all dot view files. Oh, amazing. Um, even I mean, even better. That, if we could just um I mean I hope that works. I never ignore it. I always just you know have <laughs> running on, on save so it fixes it as I save. Yeah. Um, need to configure that back. Um, so yeah, we've got our runner, and I guess we can we can pull in the image as well really quickly, and then maybe we can talk about doing the slug version of this. Yeah, we can probably get that slug up, and then we can have me and you on a different page. Yeah, let's do it. So image yeah. source. The... Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be the same colon I method mm -hmm. as before. So yeah. It's going to be run dot route name. So here you don't need the um, the brackets because you're using the binding. What's the the um, the uh, general? So the general rule I'm guessing is that when you're doing these bindings, it's it's uh, with the colon and versus like kind of here with the v4, it's just like the the standard like parentheses method. Is there a general rule of thumb of when you use one versus the other? Well, v4 is a directive. Mm -hmm. So that that works how that works how directives work. Uh, binding is what like basically um, you want it like almost like say you want it to be dynamic say because if you take away those two dots then you're going to get that source and that will be like just as if you were using it in the static folder in the assets folder just as you would, as you would use a normal image, right? But now that we want to bind this, we want to say this is JavaScript. This is not HTML string. Yeah. So um, in this, exactly, in the alt and the source, you need to put it in here as like this. But if you're using it in the template, you need to use the two um, mustache. Yeah. Um, that's a good rule of thumb. And then what's the image? There we go. We've got images as well. So Excellent. This is great. Um, and since Tailwind is already in this file, you know I could I could spend some time and, and clean this up a little bit. But uh, um, let's let's take a look at the at the routing rather than <laughs> rather than the Tailwind because uh, I'm uh, I think that'll be a little more a little more fun. Um, so I guess I should just head over to that slug file. Okay, so um, pretty much what do you want to show in here? You want to pretty much have the same as what you have in the in the run page, right? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe maybe we could break it down by individual runs just to just to get started, since we've already got the run data coming in and we've already got it kind of like formatted a little bit. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have to do that same call yeah. unless you're going to like separate it out and put it into uh, an external file and call mm -hmm. it in. So um, for just for to make it easier, we can just copy that whole script tag. I was hoping you'd say you'd say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, the run page is is kind of like just a static page, right? And we're yeah. basically taking the run page and we're making it a dynamic page. Mm -hmm. So we want this same data in here. Mm -hmm. And um, on this time, instead of doing a V4, well, we are, we can do a V4 because you've got like, um, so what are we trying to do here? What, where are we, how are we getting our slug from content for? What's, what's yeah. this, uh, how is that working? 
Yeah, so I should actually go and set those. So let me go ahead and actually pull that thing. So I'll need to modify my query, and I'll need to refresh this page. Um, so we'll have our slug okay, play, and we'll get we'll get it as a as a field in the object. But let me go ahead and actually set that because some of these don't have slugs yet. Um, and on the contentful side, this is just a text field. Um, so we do, it's just kind of like a wrapper to our text field view. So it's actually identical to this field. It's just the way it's rendered to an editorial team is a little different. And uh, if I um, hadn't already set the um, set the title of the entry, it would actually do this automatically for me. But since I since I pre-built these, um, I have to do it manually. But but yeah, we can get them, and they'll just come through as uh, as like single line text items right there, okay. um, in the object. Um, and so maybe we can where where is the slug actually get set in? Uh, so the slug is coming from params. Yeah. So um, you wanna. Like if you if you print out onto the page params yeah. dot slug, um, then you'll see what the slug is. Um, yeah, let me just it's added to the query. Um, just put it uh, in. just in the in the script file or in the template or yeah, just in the template, just so people can see where you know. Yeah. Um, is that a uh, like a HTML object or just like throw it in a uh, throw it in a or like don't, it's like the pre tag. Yeah, I? but don't don't break. Um, just so. Just, Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, just after the run or just before the where you have run, just yeah. put in um, a paragraph tag and just put in the two uh, um, mustaches and then just put params. Oh. <laughs> params dot slug. slug. And we can see we're getting this. Back. I'm not sure if we need to do. Yeah, I was. I I guess where where I was kind of checking is like, do we need to set this somewhere? Like, should we set it as because uh, it's right now it's just contentful is just giving us a a text and we're not we're not setting anything. Exactly. But I want to just see if that's coming back for us. So, just, so if we if we now go to the run page, so you save that. I um, saved it in the slug page. Should I save it in the runs page or in the uh, run page? No, no, no. So now if you go to the the site. Yeah. This side, yeah. No, no, the 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 live version. <laughs> the live version. Okay. So, <laughs> and now if you put instead of run, if you put in I don't know Debbie for example or whatever, um, so I cannot read slug of undefined. So we need to yeah. use um a router or I can't remember what it is, um, uh dollar root. Yeah, in in here or. Yeah, because in... we wanted to get the um we get the actual slug. So we want to actually then then be able to say once we've got our slug, then be able to say when the slug is equal to, then mm -hmm. we can print it out. So what we want to do is just get the. Dun, 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 dun. I can never remember these things. <laughs> what did you call yeah. dot slug? On... Yeah, I'm always looking at documentation. <laughs> uh, I wish I could print the documentation because I like having having paper, but uh, I'm a weirdo like that. <laughs> yeah, I just want to uh, want to see how it comes back to me to then because what we're going to have to do is do a fine but i just wanted to make it easier and now make it more complicated <laughs> um i think it's dollar root dot um param sub slug that we use or dollar I mean, i'm just not i don't remember off hard um we can try a dollar root, root dot param sub slug like that yeah it's one of those it just depends on where you use it. You can use params.slug. There we go. We got there it, we go. Debbie. So, so we're getting the root Debbie. Um, mm -hmm. And if you put in your name, it's going to come out as your root. Oh, I, t I get it. I get it where you're coming from now. So the, no. the, so what we need to do then is probably modify our GraphQL query to filter based on the runner or filter based on the, um, to the, the, OK, I think I have an idea. So. Um, we can do a filter. So we'll need a different query here. So where? Uh, 
probably be easier to do it by so I'm going to go ahead and filter this run collection by the mm -hmm. slug. Um, mm -hmm. So filter. Yeah, because right now we're just doing a dummy slug. We're, you know, we're yep. not doing anything. Yep. But just to show you how the slug works, that, that is a dynamic page because we're getting the slug. Whatever yeah. we put in there. I'm, uh, this, is, this is me thinking about it in a static site direction. I'm thinking about it as like I'm absorbing my like data collection and then I'm pooping out what the pages look like. But since we're doing it dynamically, we're actually, the web browser is is giving us a slug and then we need to filter on the slug. This is my fault for for uh, spending too much time in, in the static site world, unfortunately. But uh... Oh, I live in the static site world. <laughs> I prefer it. <laughs> right. Static sites we're... are free, so you know. <laughs> where I'm runner i i don't know if i can do a oh maybe i can't runner or runner name let's see if this i mean i don't know if you can do it here because you're more yeah. the expert in this and if not <laughs> then we just do like a filter where the params.slug is equal to the data collection dot runner dot slug or whatever the yeah let's see if this works I don't know why I use an equal. You're even getting prettier errors, errors in GraphQL. <laughs> oh man, You're I'm cute terrible. You are. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So this is this is how we do it. We can we can filter on the name and the. So I'm going to go ahead and update the query, um, and I will need to make this a dynamic query as well. So let me go ahead and take a look back at that Nux documentation or the GraphQL documentation and see if there's a way we can do dynamic queries in here using variables. Uh, const variable equals first 10. That's just to show the first 10. Yeah. OK, and so shouldn't this be coming before the query? Oh, no, it's not, because the query gets sent at the GraphQL yeah, request right. page. Got it. So OK, so this is going to be a dollar sign. And does it need to be? The dollar. So we'll see if this, if this works. Name. And then we're going to do name equals. Um, and then it's going to be that param. Uh, wrap param slug. And I'm guessing since we're in the script area, we don't need to, or we do need to still dollar it? Um, not sure yet. OK, we'll try it. Uh, const name, and let's see if this let's see if this works. We might need to do this.root.params. But no, we're in async data, so no. No, 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 no. We should, we sh it should just work with params, because we passed params into async mm -hmm. data. Yes, we did do that. So let me get rid of the root then. So it should just be like this. Should be, should be. I mean, we got we got some errors. Uh, I'm betting these are pretty. Yeah, these are prettier errors. Give me a second. Just so that that, that, that so ignored it. it. Didn't do what it was doing. Didn't didn't work unfortunately. I gotta fix that before the next stream. Sorry for having to <laughs> making you put up with my prettier prettier errors. <laughs> Yeah, I, I should just send you the VS code setting I have, and it's just like, Phew. okay, so yeah. a name is assigned a value whenever you use. That's correct. Yeah. So oh. you need to then. Um, Are we not you, using it up here? No, you, you're, you're not. Yeah, but you're not passing it out of there. So if you go to the documentation. Yeah. They were saying. Oh, um, I got to pass the variables. Yep, I got to update my query. I could do that. Yeah. works. Oh. Cool. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at that slug. So query cannot be executed. Errors cannot be executed. Yes, I think I can have full side. Let me just take a look at what that query is. Um, maybe it's a. Yeah, because if you go, yeah. I might need to get rid of the quotes. It might be the, the quotes that are messing with it. Because we're. This is all GraphQL stuff. Yeah. Quest ID. Let's go to the documentation for a second of that module. Yeah, absolutely. See what we're doing. So um, 
I didn't. Uh... Um, so do, you, the... do you need to put, do you need put, put the name in brackets to destructure the constant uh, variable calls? You mean like? Uh, uh, down, no, 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 below, 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 down. Yeah. Here in the parameter slug, do we need to destructure this? Uh oh, make it a oh yeah yeah I get what you're saying I get what you're saying so let me do it more like uh this then um name colon we would just pass it this more like that I'm guessing. We'll see. Don't have all the answers. Uh, name is not defined. Okay, what's well, a different message? So. <laughs> um. Hmm. Name is not defined, and I am getting is not defined. It's up above. Oh, get rid of the dollar. I don't know. It just says the dollar name is not defined. Yeah. Let me see what this guy's. So. First, first. Huh, that's interesting. Where is the? Is it so maybe reading the? You're passing it into so your dollar first in your query, which mm -hmm. is an integer. You're setting the actual type, mm -hmm. and then you're using it. So in the old planets, which is the actual query, you're using name as dollar name. Mm -hmm. So. We haven't, what have we passed it into in the query or into the actual one below it? Uh, I think we're doing, let me pull up the, we're passing it. It's kind of binding no. together. So up above, up above. Yeah. Above, yeah. So here we've got, so we're using aware, but we haven't actually um, passed it into the query. So if you go back to where he, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, we are using. That's a different one. Sorry. Too many windows open. Yeah, tell me about it. There we go. <laughs> Variable. So, see the way you like, yeah, I mean, if you just like copy that and put it on the same page, then it's easier <laughs> to go going back and forth. And then you can kind of like see what you're doing, what you're doing wrong. Um, yeah. Great. There we go. So, basically, what I'm saying is he's saying dollar first, which is our name, right? So, dollar mm -hmm. name equal to or as an integer um, and then you use name as dollar name or first as dollar first in this case mm -hmm. right so it would still need to be the so you put in runner as dollar name so maybe this needs to be name uh well so the runner is the i think where is where the contentful stuff is like runner is an is a content type and so it's like a two-layer filter so maybe it's it's um so it would actually end up being like name. Yeah. Like this. More like that. Yeah, See. possibly. I mean, I don't know, because content was giving it all to you, isn't it? And then here it's different. So. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if that works. Hmm. Oop, it's a little too. Uh... Module build fail. GraphQL is already. Oh, that's because I didn't comment out this first one. That's my fault. You sure? Uh, yeah, it's because we declared oh, GraphQL right. twice there. Yeah. Um, okay, so what error have we got now? Uh, oh, this is. Earlier! <laughs> well, that one I know how to fix now. If, if I've learned anything from, from today's session, it's how to fix prettier errors. <laughs> Thanks, Christoph. Yeah, you'd think that I would rule the GraphQL. I've just written a, or just recorded a course on it and everything. <laughs> um, but you know, when you're standing here looking at something, you're kind of going, and you can only see like so much, and then like someone keeps changing. Okay, good. Variable n dollar name. Back is not to where we were. So yeah. at least you know. So yeah, this is what I'm saying is that um, it's to do with this variable dollar name, like the way you're mm -hmm. doing it different to the example yeah and i don't know if that's because it's coming it's the contentful thing or not um so if you go back to the to the 
uh, Nuxt site, and you can see like, like if you just use the like the site. Or, no, like where we were. Oh, where we were. like sorry, <laughs> this site, <laughs> the running site, not the not the Nux documentation. Site. No, go back, go back to the application because yeah. basically picking up the dollar name as a variable is not defined, right? Yeah. So, where if you go up to his example, um, yeah, he's he's defining it as an int in the query, and I right. I guess like my confusion is and maybe we throw name in as a string. Like I'm not sure That's if right. this is yeah. Let's try it. I guess my confusion here is. Um, just uh, uh, confusing whether that's an R API thing or a like the way that this guy has his his. Um, but we can try it. Let's see what happens. So do we name um, string is string capitalized or? Yeah, I think so. All right. Let's... And and then we've got if you look at just what is what is this example? Is it name dollar name or is it? Name he name. has it as dollar first integer and then and first then dollar afterwards because it's referring to name is referring to that and then mm -hmm. we use um const variables so if you can you just use const variables equals and yeah. use it that way so that we're not passing in name again use the word yep absolutely i can do that so const variables const variables and it's Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we I got it. Think, I don't think so, but I think we're um, we're better. And and if not, you can just like you know manually um... like just do a string concat. No, it Ooh, uh, it worked. So now we've got our. So you got no errors. So mm -hmm. that's good. We're outputting the slug. We're uh, not getting our data. Yes, that is not correct. Right, so yeah, because we're console log, we're still console logging that data, so we have an empty array now, um, which that is that's different. That's a different problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's, it's reading it. Yeah. So, um, maybe if you just put, see the way you, we put dynamically the name. Maybe if you can just put like um, your name. Just uh, for now, just do do it manually. Just yeah. Oh, actually, I think I figured it out. Um, it's probably because it's a lowercase here. There we go. There you go. That's why I said just do it out in, in <laughs> category, and then you can see what's going on, right? Yeah. So, oh, sorry that's about. That's a phone call to say that you've just won <laughs> loads of money. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's my. I think that's an Amazon delivery. Uh, let me just go buzz him in. I'll just. Okay, sorry, just, one. I'll keep. I'll keep the phone going. So yeah. So basically, when you're when you get issues like this, um, not only just check the documentation, but also. You know, do something like manually, kind of like make sure you're getting and you're seeing what's coming back because otherwise you could be like forever yeah. going, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> so, um, yeah, you need to kind of like, you know, get that into lowercase. Otherwise, that'll be enough. Yeah. Yeah. I need to standardize that. So, I'd probably do like a two lower or something on the. So, normally, this, uh, this uh, slug field would actually take care of all that for us. It's just because uh, I did the order did of operations fast. a little wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if we create if we create a new a new run, it would uh, it should actually work correctly. So, hello. But well, it's because I, we did it by names, and the names is a capital letter. Remember? Yeah, and so now it'll auto lowercase it for me since I typed yeah. it in. I messed it up, but um, I think this is pretty cool. We I feel like we made we made a decent amount of progress. We yeah. we got we uh, you sh you showed me kind of how Nux works. We managed to hook up to GraphQL, and then you you taught us all about how how routing works as well. So I feel this, this is a pretty good amount of work for for an hour. I uh, I'm pretty happy with this. So yes, and I'm running in Palma in this beautiful cathedral. And <laughs> I'm so jealous. This is so much nicer than uh, than Brooklyn. <laughs> I love Brooklyn, but uh, but we don't have any good beaches here, uh, or not not close by <laughs> by any yeah. means. No, we're very we're very lucky to be able to yeah. run in where we are. So that's good. But yeah, um, um, I think it's yeah. good what we've done in the sense of like you know it's using the GraphQL is kind of mm -hmm. like the hardest thing here. Mm -hmm. So our, our main problems were were prettier <laughs> and <laughs> and modifying the the GraphQL query. Other than that, everything runs smoothly. <laughs> um, um, should we I go over? Gonna, oh, go I ahead. I was going to show you something actually um, that I. How long do we have? Uh, up to you. 
I, I'm okay. good to go for another 20 minutes, but I want to make sure I'm respecting your time as well. Okay, let's, do, let's do, let's see if we can do this in 20 minutes, right? Cool. So we talked earlier about server-side rendering and static. Yeah. Right. So, um, if you have your application as, as static, but when we'd need to do, we'd need to deploy this. Do we have any, do you have one deployed by any chance? I don't have this deployed anywhere. Um, can but I could toss it in that. Yeah. Just, just yeah. make sure you have, um, uh, target static in your next config and then just check it up to Netlify. Yeah. So one of the one of the things I'm curious about here is how is it going to know which routes to output? Like, is it going to need to hit can, the Contentful API to figure out what routes are available or? So um, basically, when it's building your your site, there is an actual crawler included. Yeah. The crawler actually crawls all the links. So once we're linking to those pages, are we linking to those pages? From not here? right now, no. But so we can let's make those a link because if not, we will have issues. <laughs> yeah, so we can make that actually. I think pretty quickly um, with the run tag. So it'll be a no, 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 link. Nux link is that like a? Oh, I see. I see. You've got magic. Yeah, so instead of href, we use two. So this is going to make sure your page doesn't refresh, and it's going to, like, you know, the crawler is going to crawl all these next links for you, one crawl yeah. a tag. Um, two. Two, and that's going to be like that, I'm guessing? If it's dynamic, yes. Yeah, so it'll be, and we can do, yeah, one dot slug what did i call it nope i gotta update this query uh let's see if that works uh i how much you want to bet this is prettier being yep this is prettier being mad with me um because you just put everything in one in one line, line. yeah no order there at all and it's like yeah um yeah it's still gonna give you errors just you know you know two three four two spaces too much at nux link yeah this is this is uh if your code editor has got different settings to yeah. it, and that's what makes the conflict so you can uh set up your code editor to be this the same my, yeah modify prettier to be the same this is my fault from from using a, a fresh version of VS Code. I need to uh, I need to fix yeah. this all for for the next time we stream. Um, then run, and we've got our. Oh, did I? Nope. <laughs> uh, have I done? Where did it go? You're on the wrong page. Go back to the run page. No, because that was printing out the data. The run. Where's the? It's the route name, and then there's a p tag right, with. Okay. Put a put a um put a class of something so you can see it. Text to text red or something, so you can see it. Yeah. Do I have the order right? Is it nux link and then, or is it p tag then nux link or nux link and then p tag? Well, Does that matter? You, you don't need a p tag at all. It's just a. Oh. It's like an A, you don't need to put a, an A in a P. You can if you want, you know. But I think nothing's coming out. I think your run dot runner dot slug is your issue. Yeah, run dot. So if yep, you put like that's static, correct. It should be it should be that. Okay. Uh, so let's check it. Yeah. And except we're not doing we're not doing it that way. We're doing it as run dot runner dot name. Didn't actually end up using the dot slug, I think. Yeah, because we're going to Debian, we're yeah. going to tell you. Yeah. So. So you might want to just like you know take away the pre tags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're getting. In the way little, now. Yeah. And. Now we'll get all your runs on your page. Yeah. And, and all. Uh, there we go. Cool. So we've got we've got our links, and now we can set up the uh, the static site, and it'll just crawl these Nux links automatically. Mm -hmm. So that you said that was in the config that we needed to change it to a static mode. Yeah. So you need to put target static. Uh, yeah. Is that something I'm just going to add, or is there something I need to overwrite? 
Uh, you can you're gonna have to add it because we we chose server at the start so oh. server um target server is the default so it's not going to be there um no just um as a string just as a string uh lowercase or capital no, that's it that's it perfect that's it okay. yeah so then that no. should work but we can test it locally you can just do yarn generate yeah Absolutely. And then you can see it. if those routes actually get generated because um, without having to go to Netlify and wait for stuff, we can see. It'll make like a public file, public directory or something. A dist, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll get some. Oh, we stuff. saw it up there. Uh, so long, you see, we're going to go to production. Yeah. <laughs> Generated root dash i dash Debbie. Right, and we didn't do anything to do that, right? That was so, one line. That was super easy. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's um, it's working as a static site. Everything, if you scroll down, you'll see content in there. Yeah. In that actual file. Um, yeah, I see our images, our URLs, our dates and stuff. So everything is there, which means yeah. it's as static as static can be. <laughs> and, uh, and then that disk folder, you literally can just drag and drop it onto Netlify. Yeah. Yeah, or just throw it into your GitHub pages or something too as well. Exactly, you know. or whatever static server you're using. Um, so do you want to throw that into Netlify? Uh, yeah, we can We can do that really quickly. Uh, it is quite uh, quick. You can just do the drag and drop one, right, rather than actually. Yeah, let's do that. Um, um, and then while it's building, I'll show you the preview. Netlify.com. I'm just okay. looking at the, the, the in the comments there. I forgot to use Nook's link in my first Nook site when I switched. Everything went so smooth. <laughs> yeah, completely. Like you know, Nook's link. Um, it's just you know, it's gonna make your life easier. So make sure you're using it. Um, new is there a new site from? Just down the bottom. I think you can just do a, a drag and drop in the actual. Oh, actually, this might be it might be a problem because I don't actually have any idea how to get to this directory from within the Windows file system, which um, is a small thing, because uh, the way the way it sets it up is it installs an Ubuntu instance, and I have no idea where this is on my system right now. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have an easy way of getting to this code base, unfortunately. Let me see if there's an open, reveal an explorer. Does this work? Yeah, normally. It does, great. That's where, that's where my code is. Cool, solve this problem. <laughs> Oh my God, Windows problems, Ubuntu problems. So the, the last time I used Visual Studio Code was Visual Studio 95, which was when I was learning to program. I was taking uh, Visual Basic courses in my high school, um, which was uh, was definitely something. <laughs> well, you need to find the drag and drop one. Uh, there we go. Here okay. it is, right at the bottom. It's kind of a little bit hidden there, isn't he? Yeah, I had to click into sites. Okay, so that's while that's running, I mean, that's it. I mean, we're... Yeah, because we have nothing on the home page to link to the run, right? But and you wouldn't know that that's a button. So did we get an error there or something? Yes, we did because I need to uh, do like the dot dot on the runs. But the the link itself did actually work. It did create the route. I want to fix that and regenerate it. Yeah, and we could do that remove, really quick. The pre tags as well. Yes, so those are on the run the slug page. So we can get rid of the pre tag here. Uh, get rid of that. And then on the run page, it's going to be, um, do I need to do a dot dot in the Nux is link that, or is that going to, um, it's going to run dot runner dot name. I mean, it was working, right? Yeah. I think what it's doing is it's generating the, um, oh, it's going, it's putting run before it. Yeah, so it's it, doing. So just do like this the to make it go home. Just do a slash before it. So just put them in um, backticks and then put the slash, like that or yeah. But just put backtick first because um, well backtick. no yeah and then that backtick. I'm not sure what a backtick is. is um, that... What do you call them? Things that go back in their ticks like 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 quotes but slanted. Oh oh like a like an apostrophe <laughs> or this that, thing that one, that one yeah. yeah and then and then you can put the um, slash because that's now. Um, yeah. normal and then put um dot no don't close it yet then put dollar dollar and put the one curly bracket and then at the end of dot name put another one and, and then uh, close it 
But you're doing the wrong slash. I think you're you're using a window slash. So it's more like it's more like this one. Yeah. So that that should give us the. Um, I'm hoping. Do I need to get rid of these quotes no, as no, well? No, 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 that's that's fine. Just leave it as is. Okay. Uh, let me hit save and see if this works. Because we're just basically saying go to the root of where you are rather than um, go from the. Um, yeah. Rather than go from the page. Um, Actually, if not, we can just use the actual root name. WSL. What is WSL? Uh, WSL is the, it's a Windows, um, I don't know what it stands for, but it's a, it's a thing that Windows uses to, let, Windows subsystem for Linux. So basically Windows uh, installs a Linux container. It's actually in the Microsoft Store, which is a very strange experience installing Ubuntu from the official Microsoft Store. But it, um, it, it essentially is like a Docker container or like a VM inside your Windows machine. And that way, whenever you hook up VS Code, you can, um, it'll connect to this Ubuntu container. So rather than having to use something like PowerShell or, or command line, you can, you can use a traditional like uh, bash or, or brew and then get all of the associated packages and, and stuff like that. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Yarn doesn't play cleanly with with Windows, but it, it it's fine on Linux. And so it lets me do all of the kind of programming stuff. I haven't programmed on Windows in a long time. And so being able to use Linux is, is, is uh, very helpful for me. Um, I know Joe Nash and the Raise.dev team did a, a Twitch stream recently on on VS Code and all of the trips and tricks, and they they do a whole overview showcasing kind of how how this stuff works and how you can get it set up, and that's kind of what I use to get myself going as well. So, okay, cool. Uh, okay. So let's see okay. if it's yep. We've got our route created. So let me go ahead and uh, upload that back up to Netlify. Yeah, but you need to remove those consoles because that's. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that too. Because um, we want to make sure but both routes got generated. And I can only see Debbie there, which makes me worried. Because of the console log, I can't actually see. <laughs> <laughs> and um, And what we can actually do as well is that we can actually test before we go to Netlify, you, we can actually do yarn start. So we've got our roots, great. Yeah. We can actually do yarn start and that's gonna actually show it in a production environment. So we're now um, serving this in a production environment as if it was on Netlify. And if you click on that oh. one, yeah. It and was, now, uh, let me double check, that was 3000. So we are on the old one. Yeah, it says in the, in the, in the box there, it was production. Mm -hmm. And again, we've nothing in the home link to go to our run page. <laughs> And if we click on that, yep, it should that work, works. Thing, right? So it's very hard to see the difference from one page <laughs> and another, right? But you can see, at least with Debbie, you can see that it's just got my York. Yeah. It's just, you know, click on me and forget you. <laughs> <laughs> That's easier. I mean, I don't want to see my heart rate. I want to see this nice cathedral for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we should have, like, you know, used Tailwind and actually kind of separated. <laughs> I like that we made, I made a whole point of pointing out that we had Tailwind pre-installed and then we didn't use it at all. <laughs> oh, That's okay. on me. This is working now in production. It should work mm -hmm. in Netlify because we've... Um, yeah. Because and then we, is there an easy way to actually do the... Oh, yep, just go to deploy and then copy-paste. Drag and drop. Drag and drop. I love how fast this is. Uh, who needs yeah. a build server when you can just use your local machine? I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Oh, and yeah, you're right. I shouldn't click on me. It's a bad one. Click on you. And there we go. It works. Okay. So this is working right now. What I want to do is I want to go into contentful mm -hmm. yeah. and I want to change something in here, mm -hmm. like modify something. Let's do it on my one because, you know, um, let's modify the name of the run or something, or put my surname. Sub something simple. I yeah, let me let me modify the run since. Uh, what are we actually? I guess we could change the the picture really quickly. Um, oh, yeah, that's very visual. At least you'll, you'll definitely notice that. I uh, grab this one. I don't know if this actually representative it looks like it's the same cathedral but oh yeah this is exactly where i run don't worry this is seriously yeah this is <laughs> this is uh this is good 
Now, I've never done this with content full, so I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work or not. Yeah, so, so normally like, normally what we would we would do on the contentful side if we um, is we would actually set up like a webhook. Um, so we can use a webhook here to trigger a Netlify build and then it would it would see, hey, something has changed. You need to re-trigger the build. We're gonna have to rerun this locally to get have it get the new image. Um, right, so we're in contentful, yeah. you gotta rerun this to get the image, okay? So mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. So you can that's the image, but not not here. I don't want you to do anything in Netlify. Okay. Hands Only in content for it. Like yep. we've, we've we've just submitted this up, and now we've decided to change the photograph. Or we're not, not going to sh sh we're not sure that this photograph is working. So we want to you know check it first, and we don't mm -hmm. we can't do this like um, in a oh, we preview. A we're right? talking about preview, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we want to do a preview. So how we set up the preview is um, so because yeah, because if we go to our um, let me see, if we go to our our code mm -hmm. and like we haven't changed anything here and nope. our production site is going to have one image and our other site is going to have another mm -hmm. image we want to we want to see it change live and see the changes right so yeah. what we can do is we can preview um by using um if you go to preview mode in in the next documentation and you can actually just copy the plugin because it's yeah. basically you just have to create a uh, preview.client.js plugin. Yeah, so this guy. You copy the first one. See, jumping, jumping without reading documentation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, this one, uh, the file preview client. Yeah. So copy that and um, and put it in in the plugins folder. Yeah. So on the left, you got a plugins folder. New file, and yeah. that was plugin. And let me, that was. Preview.client.js. Uh, Paste it in, and then just register the plugin by um, copying that. You can see this, it from the documentation, yeah. yeah, and put it into that plugins in the Nuxt config. Uh, and that was right here. Oh. Save it and just, uh, I'm guessing, oh, run. Do I need to? It's not a module, it's a plugin. It's a plugin. Oh, sorry. I got ahead of myself there. Uh, plugin. Here we go. Okay. So now we have enable preview. So if that's saved. So this is still our... doing showing our, our dist file right now. We just did the start or dist directory. Okay, so now if we go to our local host. The 3000. Yeah, let's just yeah. try it out. And, and we need to put um, question mark enable equals true. Qu uh, preview, sorry, preview equals equals true. You can see it in the documentation just at the end of the... Um... But, uh, um, just like this? Yeah. Cool. Uh, we don't need to restart the server or anything. Um, we do, 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 do. we probably do because we added a plugin. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, and just another yarn start, or do we need to regenerate it, or? Um, just do yeah, do the well, do the generate. I'm not sure. We can just you know generate it and start it. Well, but if we if we generate it since we publish the content on Contentful, like it's gonna it's gonna grab the new version of the image anyway. Yeah. Let well let's just do start. Um, let's just do the start and see. And if not, we might have to generate it. I don't think we have to generate it again. Um, but sometimes you have to start it because we added a plugin. Dun dun dun. It looks like it's using the. It's using the old one. Um, yeah, is it is that actually going and hitting the API to? It, yeah, if you inspect it, we'll see what's going on. It's easier that way. And go to network. Because uh, my assumption is that uh, the server, when it's generating, is actually pinging contentful, and then it's creating that HTML page. And so rather than 
saving the contentful endpoint, it's saving the actual so link you, to the image. Yeah, so we're we're um, going into payload.js. That's where this is coming from, right? And yeah. the other ones, that's the static. So that's showing you the static, which means you've got no access to your to your actual GraphQL endpoint. It's all just statically in here. Yeah. Right? In mm -hmm. the payload folder. That's how the static site's working. So yeah. if you go to the other one, and I think it's um I'm not sure if it's because the preview is on at the end of Debbie or if that is an issue. I'm just thinking. But I don't think I mean I think this is this is a strange. So with with Contentful, we have a bunch of things that we would configure for our preview API. So with our preview API, it's a different API key and it's a different uh, actual uh, um, for our SDKs. It's a different URL to the API. It's a different. So it's preview.contentful.com rather than uh, cdn.contentful.com uh, for the actual API. And then with GraphQL. We have some preview stuff as well, and so so traditionally, when doing a preview thing with Contentful, you would actually just change the API endpoint. So maybe that's just messing, changing the environments when you're the environment variables rather than the like that get used from your preview context. Rather than um, if that makes sense, like we yeah. we have a totally separate endpoint for it rather than the traditional one. So basically, what we're doing here is. Um, we're skipping the the static, the full static mode. Mm -hmm. And instead of going to the payload, we're going to the um, we're going to the GraphQL API. We're actually making that mm -hmm. async call directly yeah. on the page. So if you just go to just kind of can you go out of a route and go into another route? Yeah, absolutely. So let me go to not RN. <laughs> I want to just make sure and um, pop the. I don't know if I can. Oh, I can't. Okay, so what's going on? I'm just trying to see. This is all. That's Java. Can you just do like um, only show XHR so we're not seeing all the JavaScript and everything else? Yeah. Uh, okay. And now refresh it and just go from one route to another. Yes. Let me do a hard refresh and then I'll click on. Okay, so it's not making any calls. I mean, this also might just be because the the module that the that we're using doesn't have like a, a like a preview context or something, and and so maybe this guy hasn't set it up so it knows how to deal with being in preview mode. No, 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 it's nothing to do with that. It's nothing yeah. to. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see. Do you want to just? Oh, hold on. Yeah. This is. Uh... We're on the wrong one. This uh, went away. So let me put that back. Preview. Yeah, sure. I think it's a it then. But that's fine. Refresh. And just change routes. So we're not getting any any XHR at all. I'm you know, I never use Firefox. <laughs> um that's fine. Um okay, so let's just go, let's just can you open the local one in the dev mode and let's see if that image actually changed in in context? Yeah, actually absolutely. And we actually are not just going crazy here, but um. So basically, normally it works. So normally we just yeah. do we add the plugin, and then we what we're doing is we're basically saying, yeah, we want like yeah. everything full static, but don't be. God damn it! I, should, be I knew <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> My, I guess I'm curious. Like, is it? Um, it's not caching the URL or anything like that. Like, it is actually supposed to be making a, because like we, like it's not going and getting the image and then saving it locally. It's saving the URL to the image. Um, so normally, what it's doing um, is what we're what we're getting is uh, everything is saving in a payload file. So maybe I can, we can see this now. So that's the updated um, so version, right there. It, right. So we have this in in locally. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just we're gonna run. So if we're here, we've got the get in here. So let's mm -hmm. um, run the yeah, because you're not gonna see this in here. Mm -hmm. um, if you change routes, just change routes. Yeah, absolutely. What am I getting in this? 
right? So you can see, okay, so you can see in this one, I'm getting graphqlcontentful.com. Can you just click on that and see what's yeah. that? Do you want me to... So you're getting all your JSON here. Okay, so here you're getting everything back as as the JSON, and if you are if you don't use preview, you're not going to get this coming back as JSON mm -hmm. when you're in um, if you know what I mean. So normally normally this is coming from your static folder. Mm -hmm. uh, here we're getting all the JSON from the GraphQL. You're getting the API call. Um, so normally what we would do is we generate that, and then when we use the start command, we're going to get everything um, going to the, uh, what do you call it, the static folder. So that mm -hmm. payload, it's going to be all saved in there. So it's static, it's purely static. Yeah. And then we have no access to actually the API. We can't see what's going on in the API. We only get what's in the- um, What's cached and what's cached. saved, yeah. So the preview feature allows you to preview um, what's changed before you deploy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sense. so it, it, the preview isn't just, it's not just running, like it's not just taking the site and running it dynamically. It's doing some additional work on top of that. It's basically just getting the async data call is yeah. being called. You're calling the server. Mm -hmm. So it's like having almost server side rendering going yeah. on. And you're not actually calling the payload folder, skipping the payload folder. Yeah. So even though like, and I don't know if we can see this by looking into the, into the, like if you generate it now, it's gonna make that call again when you generate it, right? Yeah, so it, and, gonna, and since we hit publish on this image, it's gonna keep getting this new image, so we would need to swap that back. Yeah, um, and you have to publish even if you're doing text. So, so if we change some text, it's still, you gotta still. Yeah, I would need to hit that publish button for it to come through, um, unless we we switch the, to the preview API, which, um, which is going to be is going to take a little bit of configuration on my end. I can't do. It. I mean, this, this should have just worked, so I'm not really sure. I'll have to play around with it. <laughs> Why? Because I literally did a video today, but I wasn't using Contable, using something else just yeah. to demonstrate it. On like, you know, you can see everything coming from the um, from it using the preview equals true, and then you can you mm -hmm. can see that. Um, because yeah. Anyway, that's basically <laughs> um, basically how it works, but we'll just have to play around with it another day. Yeah. Another day. Um, but we can see in dev mode, we can see that we've got this working, we've got it coming, we've got that image coming, and then we can yeah. like preview it and then yeah. throw it up there. So um, yeah, that's basically how it works or how yeah. it works. <laughs> uh, well, where where can folks go to to learn, see the course, and and learn more? Since we, since we are a little over time, um, where where is the best place for for folks to check it out so they can dive in or or see? I guess follow you on Twitter and and keep an eye out for that video as well as as a few other places. Yeah, I'm doing that video at the View View Toronto conference. So literally, like um, next week, you're going to be able to see that live in oh. action. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like you can see, yay, there I am. <laughs> and you can see talks from Sebastian as well from Nuxt, um, and Kruti as well from, from yeah. Nuxt Ambassador. So there's a lot of Nuxt stuff going on and, uh, there's a workshop there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to pay for that. I'm afraid. Cause it's like a seven hour, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> it is so you're really getting your money's worth for, for seven hours of your time and seven hours of learning. So. <laughs> Definitely getting your money's worth for that. So yeah, we're going to be creating a module and, and a plugin in that. And we're going to be like using, you know, content, mm -hmm. doing all this enable previews yeah. and we'll be doing this hands-on. So if you're interested in learning a lot more and you do mm -hmm. have some money or your company can afford to pay for it, then yeah. definitely, definitely recommend. Mm -hmm. And if you can't afford to pay, um, which I understand, then YouTube channel, um, I'm releasing content all the time. So yeah. check that out. Yeah. And, uh, We'll be we'll be tossing all of these links in the comments and in the video description uh, as well. So uh, if you're watching this retroactively, just scroll down to the description and you can see you can get all those links and you can click on them. Uh, since you can't click on video, unfortunately. So. Yeah, one day I'm sure. One day, one day YouTube will let us. We'll we'll have like some sort of OCR and you can just click on the link when it gets <laughs> displayed in the video. <laughs> and, and maybe like maybe you can um, send me that that beautiful app we made, and then I'll yeah. make a video on how we and get it working and kind of you know beautify yeah. it, and, and then we can have it on my <laughs> channel as well. How to use Contentful, enable preview, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. I. Uh...
Uh, I will follow up on that. That might take me a little bit because this week is a little crazy for for us with with our conference on on Thursday. So we're all we're all hands on deck. But uh, I will do that in the next couple of days. Debbie, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you sticking around uh, even extra and longer and, and showing me. I feel like I've had a really chance. I feel like I need to I need to pay you for like a couple hours for. I kind of got my own little mini mini workshop um, yeah. as well. So <laughs> thank we you so much. We did more than planned. So, you know, but it was fun. It was fun. We made a lot of mistakes. We showed everyone that as developers, even we kind of have to figure yeah. things out. I love, I, I, I know this is kind of terrible, but I love making mistakes in these live streams because I feel like when I was starting to learn to code, I was so, uh, so bummed out by how many mistakes I am. And, and part of the, part of the journey is just recognizing that like mistakes is like part of the process and how, how we learn. So I'm kind of happy we did, we did mess yeah. up a little bit. So. Yes. And I love the fact that you just like jumped straight into one part and didn't read the other part of the <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of terrible at like that. I, I feel like, uh, it's really important to have different learning styles in like your documentation. And, and it's kind of why we do the live streams and we have the written stuff as well. For me, the, I find the best way to learn is to like just, you know, kind of rip out the screws and see what happens and put things yeah. back and which I feel like might not necessarily be the best way for pair programming. Yeah, right. but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess before we go, um, there are, I, I do want to give you the chance to plug the rest of your your links as well. And then I'm going to plug some links as well. Um, and then we can we can call it if that works. Sure. So. Uh uh, let me pull up my little slides. So, so you mentioned the YouTube channel. Yeah, so that's my YouTube channel. It's a bit of a scary, um, long <laughs> to remember. Uh, hopefully that will be sorted out soon. Um, but if not, go to debbie.codes and then that's easier and you can yeah. go to the contact page and it's got all the links and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Notes documentation. Um, like I use the documentation all the time. I don't mm. remember everything. So if you use it, like, you know, it's there for a reason. Mm. Nooks Discord, if you have like issues, you want to, you know, connect with us, you want to like ask questions and stuff. The Discord channel has all the Nooks community in there. There's a lot of people. So it's great. And View Toronto, yeah, come and see us at the conference. It's literally next week. Uh, if you've got money, come and do the workshop with me. That would be great fun. If you yeah. don't have money, uh, the conference is free. So you can listen to the talks for free and you can see how I do the preview mode with a different content system. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. We'll combine both of both our workshop and your next workshop and you'll be set. So. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then for my end, uh, you know, you can always head to the Contentful Developer Portal. That's where we keep all of our resources and links to actually everything else on this page. Um, it's where you can see our tutorials, our live streams. Uh, we've got our Slack, which is uh, our version of your Discord, uh, you know, place to ask questions and, and kind of have the community. We've got our GraphQL course. Uh, that you can, if you're looking to learn more about GraphQL, I know we kind of whizzed through it uh, pretty quickly today. Um, and so that's the place to go to learn more about that. Um, if you build something with our GraphQL API, we get, we'll get give you some swag. Uh, and then we're hosting our first ever conference uh, on Thursday. And so hopefully we'll see you all there. I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm actually giving a GraphQL talk with Stefan, one of my coworkers as well. So that's another place to learn about GraphQL. Uh, to and it's free to attend uh, and that's pretty much it for me Debbie thank you so much for for your time I really appreciate how much you taught me uh, I feel like I've learned a lot and um, I'll uh, talk to you next time yeah it's been great fun thank you for having me bye everyone <laughs> bye <laughs>